Okay, so today's lecture is about location. And in this lecture, I talk about just about any place that you can locate, including online, um, except for one. And the one location that I don't talk about is social media. Um, I would consider social media, um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, etc., to be its own separate location. Um, I'm not an expert. You guys are the experts. And so because of that, I can sincerely tell you that there is a whole lot better information out there than what I could possibly give you um, with respect to locating your business vis-a-vis -vis some kind of social media application. Um, so for that, I'm gonna encourage you to use your Google devices. For the rest of it, I will be your guide. Um, so here we go with location. So many of you may have heard that old adage, location, location, location. Well, today's topic is about where to locate your business. And I should say this is both a marketing and an operations-based decision. Uh, a lot of times the choice of your location is about communicating the value of your product or service to your target market. And so there is a marketing element to that. And in other ways, Choosing your location is about how and where you operate your business, access to raw materials, labor supply, ingress, egress, those kinds of things. You have four options for locating your business. You can do a brick and mortar store, physical location. You can locate your business online. You can locate using some kind of cooperative workspace, or you can um, locate your business at home. The traditional physical store from which businesses have historically operated is referred to as the brick and mortar. And brick and the idea behind it is the brick and mortar is what holds up the four walls of the store. Your Targets, your Trader Joe's, your Barnes and Nobles are all examples of brick and mortar stores, physical locations. Um, and it's important when you're choosing your location to think about some really big important things because choosing a location is very expensive. Once you've sh selected your location, it's very expensive. It's very difficult to move because you may have constructed the location. You may have um, put money into tenant improvements. Um, you may have signed a lease. And so it, it really is important to understand that um, choosing a poor location can affect the success of your business, and I'll give you some examples in a couple of minutes. Uh, and really, the type of business affects the importance of business location. Um, my gym happens to be located behind Trader Joe's in Oceanside. Um, that's a great location for it. It's very difficult to find, but they only have so much capacity for members. So they don't need to have street frontage on El Camino Real or street frontage on Vista Way. It's okay for them to be hidden because once they've reached a capacity of a certain members that they can take per month, um, they don't need to have any more visibility. In fact, it might it might um, be uh, part of, partially a negative thing for them if people want to attend and there's no space, there's a waiting list. Um, a restaurant, however, does need to be located someplace where people can see it, where it's easy to get in and out of the parking lot, and it needs to be central to where the target market resides. So here's an example of a building. This is on Vista Way in Oceanside. This building for many years was a variety of um, Italian restaurants. Um, perhaps if you grew up in Oceanside, you might remember Borelli's Numero Uno. Um, there was a, a, any variety of um, pizza restaurants in there. Uh, and really the location didn't, um, wasn't successful until a Japanese restaurant moved in, Terry Cafe. And what's interesting and unique to point out about that is that um, some locations for some certain areas just seem to have some kind of negative vibe over them that, that cannot seem to be extinguished until something completely different moves in. And so that's what happened um, with this particular location in Terry Cafe. Years and years of unsuccessful um, history until finally the right type of business moved in. Might also have something to do with the quality of the food as well. 
So some key factors in selecting a good location, you have to think about customer accessibility. I'll show you an example in just a moment. You've got to be convenient to customers and you've got to be able to be accessible um, for your target customers. Um, you also need to think about the presence of established competition. Sometimes competition is a good thing. Um, along the Highway 78 corridor, we have a variety of um, beer and um, brewing based businesses, tap rooms, breweries, things like that. Um, there, is a, there is a widely held sentiment in the brewing industry that having so many businesses in the local industry and having so much competition is actually a good thing because they work together and they lift one another up. Um, that's not necessarily true of a wide variety of businesses, but sometimes the competition and having con competition around is a good thing. Uh, regulations, requirements, and restrictions. You have to understand what the zoning laws are. Um, you have to understand what is allowed in your particular city. For example, if you want to have a big sign outside your business, you might have some trouble in some of the North County cities like Carlsbad and Encinitas. You need to understand the tax structure, whether um, how taxes will affect your business. Sales taxes tend to be different in different cities in North County, San Diego right now. Um, and economic development incentives. Some cities might actually offer economic um, development incentives, and so it might behoove you to take advantage of those to locate in an area that might be in the process of gentrifying and might, might be in the process of redeveloping, where they're really trying to get some fresh business blood uh, in the area. So this is an example of not a great location. If you don't recognize this, this is the corner of Vista Way and El Camino Real, and I want to um, zoom in right here. So for many years, this was a Starbucks coffee, and I, you can actually see the picture of the Starbucks coffee. Um, the problem with this particular location, though, is if you look at the ingress and the egress to the parking lot, you really can only get in and out in one particular space. There are very few parking spaces available, and if you look, there's a double yellow line, which means that you can't legally really make a left turn into this parking lot. And even if you could, there's lots and lots of traffic. Um, not the greatest place for a Starbucks, which is why the Starbucks actually didn't last in this location. And the Western Dental Center took over the entire um, building there because it just, did, it just didn't make sense for that particular kind of business. Um, not such a bad financial hit for Starbucks, but if this was a mom and pop's coffee place, this poor location decision probably would have um, meant bankruptcy. So some key factors in selecting a good location. The first is geography. You want to think about, you know, does climate matter? Um, neighborhood, the socioeconomics of your target market, uh, the safety of the area, what types of municipal services um, the area might offer. You might think, well, my, my customers don't come in on buses or trains. They may not, but your employees might, and so you might need that. Past tenants' fate is something that you should always think about. I think uh, that Italian restaurant that I was just talking about had so many Italian restaurants because once you put in pizza ovens, they're very expensive, and so the next business moves in and says, oh, there's already pizza ovens. We'll just do another pizza restaurant. Um, without really thinking, okay, why didn't that pizza restaurant make it? What, what's going to make me different? How am I going to set myself apart? The life cycle of the area. Is it an area that's up and coming that people are, um, that, that people tend to be flocking to? Or is it an area that's kind of um, mature or maybe even in decline? Um, the rents will kind of tell you some of that, but you also should be aware for your long-term business planning purposes. Availability of resources. Do you need access to raw material? Uh, do you need access to a labor supply? And what types of adequate and reliable transportation are available to you and your employees and your suppliers? Some other additional factors might be the personal preference of the entrepreneur. Um, if you're f familiar with your home community, I know here in Oceanside, particularly in out South Oceanside, there's a really big community vibe, and uh, O-siders tend to support their own, um, so much so that there have been a couple of businesses that have moved in from Encinitas that have had some really um, difficult times because 
of the um, because of the um, willingness of people in Oceanside to um, be vocal about the fact that they support their own businesses over um, people who um, come in and, and open businesses from other cities. Uh, desire for a particular lifestyle. Maybe you want to open your business by the beach because you want to see the beautiful ocean every day. Or maybe you want to be in the mountains because, you know, you, you, your business is something that's focused on um, uh, the um, mountain lifestyle. Uh, contribution to the community. How are you giving back? Um, communities support businesses who support communities. Um, and so it's always important to remember to be um, an active participant in the community where you locate your business. In terms of financial considerations, do you lease a, a location or do you buy a location? Most business real estate experts will tell you if you're starting out to lease the location first. You don't know if that location is going to be viable. You're going to need the capital to operate your business. And if you make a bad decision, um, it's very difficult to move. When you are designing physical facilities, sometimes you move into an empty shell and then you have to do what's called tenant improvements. So you have to think about physical facilities. Are they of adequate size and accommodations? Um, what's the age and condition of the building? How much retrofitting are you going to need to do? Same goes for heating and air conditioning, uh, lighting and restrooms. Are your restrooms ADA compliant? Uh, what are the fire hazards? And how easy is it to get in and out of both the building and the parking lot. Some places where you can find suitable location for your business, contact any commercial real estate agent. A couple of websites, LoopNet has both, um, it's, it's mostly focused on um, investment properties, so it includes businesses, businesses for sale, and also like apartment buildings, things like that, and Craigslist. Moving on to the online location. It's great if you can locate a business on the internet. It gives you a couple of distinct advantages. Um, the competitive um, position that you have, um, because the, the, le the playing field is leveled somewhat between you and a larger competitor, because uh, your, all you need to do is target, you know, is, is get your in, yourself into your target customer's inbox or on their social media feed, and you have just as much of an opportunity these days as a large company. In fact, uh, we, have, we have a small business climate right now that is so supportive of small business, I would argue that a lot of small businesses have an advantage over larger businesses. It's a shortened sales cycle. What I mean by that is the, the payment is instantaneous. You don't have to wait 30 days to bill and, and another 30 days to get your money. All of a sudden, you know, you make the sale and the money goes into your account. And it's really one-on-one -on -one customer service. The owner of the business can generally talk directly to their customers, so the feedback loop is much, um, is, is, is much more abbreviated. You know immediately what's working and what's not working for your customers. Uh, biggest disadvantage of locating on the internet and locating online is the user attention span. Um, if you are advertising your business on Instagram and you're located online, you should understand that, that somebody's going to be on your web page for a matter of seconds. Somebody's going to scroll across your feed for in a matter of fractions of seconds. So it's important that you get into their, in, to their feed or get into their inbox and make a really big impression. Um, and a really important consideration when you're locating on the internet and you're using the internet and social media to market your business is that you ha really have to know the target market and the platform that they're most likely to utilize. Is it Instagram? Is it Snap? Is it Facebook? Is it something else or some kind of, is it their email? Um, so you really do need to understand who they are and how to advertise to them. The level of an online presence uh, that you want to have is something that you should consider. I think any business, whether they're brick and mortar or not, should have at least a content or information based web page that tells that's a website that basically provides product information, tells about your location, tells about your business, just something. And then a transaction based web presence is where you've got a full mechanism for somebody to go sh to, to shop your business online. Moving on to the next location would be locating your business at home. So the attractiveness of the home-based business is really based on low startup and overhead costs. 
It's very convenient. Um, and technology today makes it very simple for you to locate your business off of your smartphone, really. Um, some things that you need to know about home-based businesses is that the rules are different for every city. So you need to know what your particular city allows with respect to a home-based businesses, a home-based business. Some allow, for example, um, for you to have inventory at your house, but you can't bring customers home or to your home. Um, others allow you to bring customers, but you can't have inventory, or, or your inventory can be on your property, but it can't be in your living quarters. There's lots of nuanced little rules, so it's important to know what those rules are. Um, some disadvantages, sometimes um, there's a, a little bit of a disadvantage in terms of the image of a home-based business. People seem to think it's kind of like a, sa a sideline thing that you might be doing um, when you communicate that you work out of your home. So that's something to be aware of. Um, family and business conflicts, it can be really hard to get work done when the kids are running around, the TV's on, and, you know, your spouse is wondering, um, you know, what, what, what everybody's having for dinner. And like I said, there are some legal considerations. You really need to un know and understand what your local you what your local municipality allows with respect to operating a home-based business. The next um, location option is, is relatively new in the past five or so years, and those are cooperative workspaces, maybe five to 10 years. Cooperative workspaces are spaces, businesses like WeWork, Union Cowork is a local one, Hera is a local one, and these are spaces where you rent space in a cooperative workspace where you might get the use of a conference room, an office, um, a, a support person. A lot of these have uh, really attractive design and really cool amenities. Some offer yoga classes, some offer food and, and uh, beverages, some have uh, little microbreweries in them. Um, the price is usually attractive. I say that because uh, I say as usually because some can tend to be very expensive um, locally. I think the Hera Hub, which is designed for female entrepreneurs, also has a, a great um, uh, community of support. Um, I think they run about a little less than $200 a month. Union Cowork is another local one. I think they're more uh, closer to $350 or $400 a month. So the prices do vary quite a bit. Um, but um, what's great is, is that they're really flexible. If you have a membership, you can structure it just about any way that you want to. Um, these businesses are good for entrepreneurs who maybe don't need to, who don't sell anything um, in terms of retail, but they might need to meet with clients on a regular basis, um, or they need a quiet space to get their work done. Additional location options, maker spaces are spaces that have machine equipment so that you can make prototypes and design products. Um, they may have um, internet access and special web-based computing options so that you can do marketing and, and um, sales and operations-based stuff. Um, they may have uh, somebody that, who's there to consult and help. And they uh, generally work based on a membership or a per-use fee or a, a specific time frame. And then commercial kitchens, if you have a food-based business, um, you may need to lease space in a commercial kitchen, which um, is a kitchen that is health department approved, and it allows you to book time so that you use that kitchen for a specified amount of time when you need to, you know, let's say you're making uh, um, tomato sauce. You go uh, during your allotted time, you make all of your tomato sauce, it's all um, safe and sanitary, and you can get it jarred and done, and then um, you know you can, um, and then you you use it the next time you need to make sauce. So those are commercial kitchens. Again, there's several of those uh, located in the San Diego North County area. Um, so another good option for um, a potential location. And uh, that's it. I believe I will see you guys um, on the discussion board.